Hi, my name is uh, Moni Fryim. I'm from Mellanox, and we wanted to talk about the bifurcated driver. That's for, for PMD. It's something new, ah. but for us, it's the first day. Um, so our PMD is the, the Mellanox PMD is built on top of libibverse. It's uh, the RDMA library, and it's it's kind of a, have two parts: the fast path and the data path, the control path. Sorry, and the data path. So all the data path is directly done from the user space to the memory, though any any kernel involvement, and all the control path is done through the kernel. So. This is a generic API that's work, and so we get in, we get use of all the kernel code, and we have a, it's kind of a split driver for PMD. Um, so unlike the other PMD, the Melox PMD is yet another user space application, and not. Uh, is it, and still, be, and the NIC drive and the net device in the kernel is still fully functional. Again. So, what we gain from that? Uh, so, user, like standard user that's using the the standard Linux API, like ETH tool, uh, creating virtual uh, virtual function controlling that with the IP link, everything is fully functional. Also when you work on the physical function or a standard NIC, uh, even when we work with a PMD. So we don't have a special documentation what tweaks you need to do. You can configure the net device through the standard Linux API and con then continue to work with DPDK. Um, for security reason the, and the robustness, the PMD is only deals with virtual memory. So the way that we do it, the PMD using virtual memory, and then we can the, we use the kernel to secure that, and we don't have any memory leakage or. Okay, uh, regarding the traffic, so by default all the all the all the traffic all the packets are going to the kernel, and when you load a, a DPDK application, you usually use filters in order to to tell to which queue you want those uh, filter to follow the traffic. So you, you use the same uh, same methodology methodology on our PMD, uh, but what happened? That's all the leftover, usually when you have a DPDK application, you take all the traffic because there are no one uh, doing anything else with the leftovers of the traffic. In our case, with the bifurcated traffic, this is our native driver, we don't have any other one. What happened that if the PMD is using a filter to catch some of the traffic, all the leftovers are handled by the kernel. So let's say you want your application a very specific application that's handle only TCP. And you want to handle ARPs, you want to handle uh, to answer to things and that kind of stuff. You don't do you don't need to do anything. Just use the filter to classify for TCP packets. You can use RSS for the TCP packets. But at the end, you don't if you don't have a filter to catch the ARPs or if you don't do a default uh, to catch all the, the MAC address, your the local MAC address, what is happening? That all those packets, all the leftovers, are going down to the kernel. And if they are going to the kernel, they are handled like a normal by like normal stack. So you can answer, get answer for ARPs, for things, and even have an HTTP or or SSH, whatever you want. So this is a a little bit, it, for us it's very convenient, but 
I think for some of you it's, it's looked like something new. So we wanted to, to mention that. Um, any question on that? Okay, question later. Sorry. Another interesting thing is that uh, you can run multiple applications, multiple uh, DPTK applications on the same NIC without using any virtual functions. So you can run like three or four, how, much, how many applications that you want, uh, on the same uh, physical function uh, because each of them can create queues we have uh, the kernel that handle everything, and they they even have a, a memory separation between all the processes, so we are covered. Um, and again, regarding the steering, every application can steer what traffic that you want. So you can have a two PMD application. One of them is handling the UDP packets and. One of them handling the TCP, or even a specific one that's handling uh, like web browsing or something like that. So the, everything is very flexible. Um, we got this flexibility uh, from the old days. That's in, from the InfiniBand RDMA libraries. This is the lib verbs. So everything is very natural for us, and I think our customer use those. The, the Libite Verbs API uh, more than 10 years ago, before was the DPDK, to get the same uh, things that usually customers do today with DPDK. So we are along in the market for doing that uh, things for a long time ago. Um, so Okay, a another uh, nice thing that we can do, uh, you can, uh, it's by design, you can run a non-root application, a non-root users can run uh, the DPDK application, and so you, don't, you don't need to be a root in order to, to run this uh, DPDK application. Um, oh, that's all. I think this was short. Um, any comments, questions? Hello. Ah, okay. Oh, so, is are these current space drivers are they upstream? Are they in the tree? Yeah, this is our only driver. This all our drivers work like that. So maybe specific versions right now not upstream, but. This is the way, the concept that we are working, we don't have, it's from the first driver that we have, we are working on in this uh, architecture. Okay. So my question is, can you actually feed back the packet back from the application to the kernel, or from one application to another? So, sorry, again? My question is, once the application receives the packet, can the application feed it, uh, send it back to the kernel? Uh, or to other application. So when you got the packet, I don't familiar with any way to take the packet directly back to the kernel because this is required. I think a specific PM, the kernel PMD or something like that. But the idea is, if you don't want this, if you want this packet to go to the kernel, don't pick it up from the wire. So <laughs> don't have a filter that take this packet, and then it's go to the kernel. So you don't need to take it through. Like if you want to to have. A, uh, answer for things, don't pick up those packets from the, by, the, by a filter and then you need to take it to the kernel. So use the filter smartly that you don't have a filter that take those packets and they will go to the kernel. I think it's a much better solution than to get the traffic and then try to push it to the kernel. Well, uh, the problem is that sometimes the filter is not smart enough, right? I mean, the problem is that sometimes the filter is not smart enough. So basically, you you just figure out afterwards that you need to send the packet to the kernel, right? Yeah, I understand. But in this situation, this is a, we need to find a common way to do it for DPDK. It's not a vendor. 
it's not supposed to be a vendor solution. So, and are you doing Are you doing uh, memory translation on the hardware at that point? So do you do, do a virtual to physical translation on your NIC hardware um, to, if you're only working on visual virtual address spaces? Yes. So you have an MMU unit on them. So we have a memory translation in our card. It's called protection domain. So you can have a few of them. And that's the reason that we can run a few processes uh, without any Memory leakage. So to continue on this question, it works for guests as well? Do you yes. use the virtual address in the guest or...? Yeah, so for our driver, we don't... We have the same driver for a virtual function and physical function. So the same thing that I mentioned, everything works the same for the guest. Ah, okay, that's nice. And uh, have you considered implementing on the guest side on the part of the driver that is on the guest or on the process to do VIRT-IO there, to be more generic? Um, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm less familiar with that. The question is why we need it. We, like, it's not the main But you have your tail. That is cheap. Okay, folks. We need to keep moving it along. Ronnie, thank you very much. If there's any more questions, you can catch Ronnie at lunchtime. Thank you. We need to keep it moving, folks. Thanks, Ronnie. Thank you. Okay.